This mini lecture covers finding a least common denominator, often abbreviated as LCD, and then using that least common denominator and the rules we learned for finding equivalent fractions to create equivalent fractions that have that common denominator. So we're going to use a prior skill to do this. Um, so I want to first take a quick look at what we did for least common multiple in the previous lecture. Um, where we were looking at the least common multiple between 10 and 15 by putting both of those into our division machine simultaneously. Um, if you need a review of this lesson, I would suggest going back and watching that lecture again because um, that's what we'll be relying on for this next one. As you can see, in these first two problems, our 10 and 15 have become the denominators of, our, of two fractions and the 12 and 18 have also become the denominator of two fractions. So we're going to use the same process that we used in finding a least common denominator, a least common multiple, to find a least common denominator, because those are the same thing. Um, a least common denominator is just a least common multiple that occurs in the denominator of a fraction. So for 15 and 10, that least common denominator will be 30. And for 12 and 18, that least common denominator will be 36. So to use that information to create equivalent fractions, what this means is that our new denominator of our new fraction, in order to have them have common, a common denominator, we need to take both of these fractions and convert them into fractions that have a denominator of 30. And we need to take both of these fractions and convert them into fractions that have a denominator of 36. So the question that we're asking is, what do I need to multiply 15 by in order to get to 30? And what do I need to multiply 10 by in order to get to 30? Now those are probably math problems that you could figure out in your head, um, but I wanna show you how this inverted division that we've created will also give us that answer. Um, in the case that you get some bigger numbers in your denominator that you don't automatically know what their multiples are. So what we're gonna do is recreate the fractions by putting this six back on top of the 15 and this three back on top of the 10. Then if you look at the factor that, result, that came diagonally so the 2 is diagonal from the 6. By multiplying 2 by 6, you get 12. Likewise, the factor that is diagonal from the 3, when you multiply that by 3, you get 9. So what this machine has helped us do is realize that 3, this 3, when multiplied by 3, gives us our new denominator on the top and that 30, I'm sorry, the 30 numerator, the 9 numerator on the top and the 30 denominator on the bottom. And the same thing happened over here. The factor that we need to multiply by 15 in order to get our new denominator of 30 is 2. And when we multiply by the same factor on the top, we get 12. So 6 fifteenths is equivalent to 12 thirtieths, and 3 tenths is equivalent to 9 thirtieths. Let's look at that one more time with our other example. Again, we're going to expand our division machine to include the numerators. Look once again to the factors that are diagonal from those numerators. To get 
our new factors for the top. So 5 twelfths, when multiplied by 3 thirds, becomes 15 thirty-sixths, and 7 eighteenths, when multiplied by 2 halves, becomes 14 thirty-sixths. When we did the original lesson, we also talked about these special cases, when the two numbers that we're finding a common multiple for, where one is either a factor of the other, or they share no common multiples. So we're also going to look at some fractions with those same numbers. 3 fourths and 7 twelfths. We'll start with our division machine, the same way we have before and find the least common multiple of 4 and 12. Which, as we already know, turns out to be 12. And then by putting the, new numerator, the old numerators on the top, and multiplying by the diagonal factor we get our new fraction which now has a denominator of 12 and the new numerators So if you notice here, the 7 twelfths stays a 7 twelfths, since it already had the denominator that was the least common denominator between 4 and 12. So this fraction, multiplying it by 1 1 keeps it the same. This fraction, we needed to multiply by 3 thirds in order to get the bottom to be a 12 and the top to be a 9. In our last example, we're looking at two fractions that do not share any factors in their denominators. So as we did before with least common multiple, we will end up with the least common multiple being the product of our two denominators. And using that denominator to create our fractions, we multiply by the diagonal factor, oops, after putting the numerators on, multiply by the diagonal factor here, and we get 2 times 8 which is 16, and by the diagonal factor here, 7 times 3, which is 21. So 7 eighths is equivalent to 21 20 fourths because we multiplied both the numerator and denominator by 3, and 2 thirds is equivalent to 16 20 fourths because we multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by 8. So that ends your lesson in finding a least common denominator and equivalent fractions. We will be using this skill when we order fractions and add and subtract fractions in later lessons.